Today we're going to be making stuffed chicken scallopines with mushroom sauce and polenta. Okay, we started with 10 grams of porcini mushrooms, dried porcini mushrooms, that we have soaking in 150 milligrams of lukewarm water, and we're going to go ahead and let that soak for 30 minutes. And then we want three medium-sized, small-sized chicken breasts. According to the recipe, you want to cut them into three pieces. We didn't do that. Uh, we just went ahead and cut them in half, um, and we'll use it that way. Okay, so before we go any further, uh, we're going to go ahead and season a little bit our sliced chicken breast with just some salt and pepper. And again, you kind of do it to taste. We're going to be a little bit careful because there will be other spices that a little bit later. Some other ingredients. So again, it's kind of just do it to taste or you know what you like. Go ahead and lightly salt. Okay, so we've seasoned our chicken. So I'm going to get most of the chicken out of my way and put them over here on this plate. And then we're going to put piece by piece into this bag and go ahead and pound them. So we're going to go ahead and do that one by one. Flatten it out a little bit. Okay, I guess it doesn't really have to be zipped. And we're going to use the flat end. We went ahead and we did that and we flattened it out. It did kind of a little bit thin in the middle there. And we wanted something like that. And we'll go ahead and do our next piece and so on. Okay, we have our last one done. We're going to go ahead and uh, lay this on this plate. They're all done now as far as that part of it goes. And just give me a minute while I go wash my hands and we're going to get clean cutting boards and plates. Okay, our porcini mushrooms are ready. They've been soaking for 30 minutes, and so the next step is going to be, I'm going to pull them right out of there, and we're going to be saving this liquid, so we want to, you know, kind of get as much liquid out of the remaining mushroom here as we can. Um, I'll squeeze them too hard, and then we're going to finally chop them. So, again, we're going to be using this liquid again in another step. So we're going to set that aside a little bit, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, start to finally chop. Okay, we're just about done with our mushrooms here, and we have to say that the aroma of these mushrooms, that liquid, is quite interesting. It almost smells like a beef stock, like, you know, like a beef, a beef soup or a beef broth or something like that. Very interesting. Kind of earthy, um, which I guess is not surprising, but uh, unexpected. Okay, our next step is to go ahead and stuff our scallops, our scallopines, um, our chicken cut and pounded chicken breast. And we're going to be using butter, pine nuts, parsley, and our porcini mushrooms. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Kind of. The original recipe calls for speck, um, which we unfortunately couldn't find. And you'd want to put that speck, you start with five slices, and you'd want to cut that up and, and put it in, in, in your wrap, in your chicken. So you're going to use a third of a slice of speck for each piece of chicken. Um, we couldn't find the speck, as you said, so we're just going to omit that step entirely because the remaining speck will be going into the sauce, so we're just going to be using some bacon in the sauce. Okay, so we have our mushrooms in a piece. We're going to put a few pine nuts in there. Um, there we go. Can spread those out a little bit. Um, some butter and a little bit of parsley. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and attempt to wrap this up. Okay, that wasn't so bad. And secure it with a toothpick. Okay, and once you have your toothpick in place, it's going to look something like this. We're going to and wrap it up with the ingredients, put our toothpick in there, uh, and that's about how you want it to look. So we're going to go ahead and do the rest and get it ready for the next step. So our next step is to prepare our mushrooms for our sauce. We're going to start with 200 grams of fresh shiitake mushrooms, except we didn't find any fresh shiitake mushrooms, so ours will be dried, and then 150 grams of oyster mushrooms. But we did rehydrate them. So the first step with these shiitakes is you want to get that stem out of there um, because it is a very tough part of the, the mushroom, and we don't want that in our sauce. Okay, so we have our stems cut out of our shiitake mushrooms. And there are oyster mushrooms. 
And so they are ready to go. And one of the things that are interesting about the variety of mushrooms in this dish is that if you know anything about Antonio Carluccio, he liked you forage for mushrooms, and he loved his mushrooms. I think he even has a video all about mushrooms. So there is a nice little variety of mushrooms in this dish, and I'm sure it'll be great. Okay, so our next step is we're going to uh, dip these in flour and fry them up. But before we do that, we're going to season our flour a little bit with some more salt and pepper. Again, I think it's just kind of a, you know, to taste kind of a thing. So we have that. And add a little salt, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'll set these out of my way. And then we're going to be using extra virgin olive oil. And we're going to be using two tablespoons, or that's what the recipe calls for. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And we're going to go from there. Okay, I think that's probably more than enough. Set that out of my way. Okay, so we're going to take our first one and just kind of give it a light little dusting in our flour. Do that. And while we're letting our pan heat up, we're going to fry it in just a minute. Okay, we've turned this to a very low heat, but I think it's just about ready to go now. So we're going to go ahead and fry these up until they're done. Okay, our chicken looks like it's done. It looks really good. Nice little brown. So we're going to go ahead and remove this chicken from the pan here. And then we're going to start on our sauce. So, remove that. Okay, normally, you know, we already said that the recipe calls for speck, which we couldn't find. So we're going to just twist it a little bit because we do have to use bacon. And we're going to go ahead and fry the bacon up a little bit first because the bacon is raw. It's not cured. Yeah, yeah. This, and the speck, um, how it is different is that speck is made from the leg of the pig, whereas I think bacon is made from the belly. Um, speck is cured and lightly smoked, and obviously bacon is smoked quite a lot. So it, it will be different in taste, but, you know, we had to do what we had to do. Okay, the next step, our bacon is just about done. It's going to continue to cook, but we're going to add one small shallot into this mixture. Go ahead and add that, and a clove of garlic. Set that aside, and put our garlic in there, and let this cook for about 30 seconds. Okay, so now that that's ready, we're going to go ahead and add our mushrooms. And that's going to cook for three minutes. Now at this point, now that our mushrooms and onions and everything, or scallops rather, are, are done, um, we would normally be adding the speck at this point, but we're not doing that since we didn't have specks. So we had the bacon first to cook. So anyway, we're going to be skipping that step, and we're going to add two tablespoons of a dry red wine. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and let this cook for an additional two minutes so that our alcohol of wine rather has a chance to evaporate. Okay, so that's our red wine is cooked now. That's been two minutes. The next step is to add our mushroom liquid that we saved at the beginning. So we're going to add four tablespoons of that. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and let that cook for an additional two minutes. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and add our chicken back to the pan. Uh, we have removed the toothpicks. So we're going to go ahead and add chicken pieces back to the pan. Now 
Now the recipe does say that you can add a little bit more of that liquid if needed. Now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more because we think, you know, it, it needs it. Uh, and once we do that, we're going to let it simmer for an additional five minutes. Okay, so now that we've done that, I forget how many I added. I just said, can I add it according to site? Um, it looks like it's a little bit more liquefied now. And we're going to let this simmer for five minutes. And there's one, a few steps we did kind of jump the gun on a little bit here, or, or forgot. Um, we're going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. Not, not a lot. A little bit more seasoning. Add that. A little bit more pepper. Okay, the, the recipe calls for a teaspoon of parsley. I'm going to cheat here and just kind of eyeball it a little bit. I think it's probably pretty close. Okay, and then a tablespoon of passata. So we're just using tomato puree because we didn't want to open an entire bottle of passata just for one tablespoon. Okay, so our sauce and our chicken are done. So now we're going to serve with polenta, so we're just going to take a minute to prepare that, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and make our polenta then, because we're going to serve our dish with polenta. And the recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt, we're just going to eyeball that. That's probably pretty good. Okay, our water is boiling, we're going to go ahead and add our polenta to the water. Whisk that in. Again, we're just making out of a packet. We're just kind of following the packet directions. I'm going to whisk that until it thickens. Okay, our polenta is thickening up. We're going to go ahead and add our butter. Probably a couple tablespoons of butter. Add that, and we're going to go ahead and add some parsley as well. A um, couple tablespoons of that. We'll add that. We'll mix a little more, and we're just about ready to go. Okay, we're just about done. We're going to take a minute or two to plate it up, and then we're going to do a taste test. Okay, so now that it's done, we're going to go ahead and do the taste test. I'm going to take a little chicken, and I'm going to take a little mushroom, and a little polenta. We'll get kind of a trifecta thing going here, and I'll let you know how it is. That's really good. Mm, very nice combo of, uh, of all the ingredients. The mushrooms are great. I think you'd want to stick to the specialty mushrooms. I don't think regular mushrooms would be what you wanted to use. With the polenta and the mushrooms and the pine nuts, all goes very well together. I would say Antonio has done it again. Very, very good. So as I say goodbye, I'm going to go ahead and keep eating because I'm a little hungry.